Welcome back to another video tutorial brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. Today we're going to be working in Adobe Illustrator CS4 and we're going to kind of continue the theme uh, from a couple earlier movies um, which uh, earlier we talked about creating gradients and using the brush the paintbrush tool. In this movie we're going to kind of pull it all together and edit some symbols. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a really quick gradient on the background. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I'm going to create first of all a object and uh, I'm going to get rid of the stroke color for that and if I'm going a little fast for this I suggest you watch the movie on um, how to use the gradient tool to create this. I've colored it a solid, solid color now I'm going to create a gradient on it and um, it doesn't really matter what color you make it. I'm going to change it anyway in the gradient menu. I've got my gradient menu up I've got my color swatches back here. I'm going to let this go from green to yellow. See how that looks and that looks pretty cool. I like that. Uh, but I am going to change the angle at which that gradient is happening to something like this and I am going to make it, that's what we've got, and I am going to make it a little bit more yellow. Um, so to do that I'm going to pull this down a little bit and then my yellow is a little bit more strong. It's uh, the gradient's a little bit smoother from that green to the to the yellow. It lasts a little bit longer. Um, all right, now I'm going to put some brush strokes in the background. And remember, the point of this is to create kind of an interesting, unique background, or maybe just an abstract or non-objective um, looking image in the background. So uh, first of all, I need to bring up my brushes. So I'll click on my brushes. And to find my brushes, I'll go up to Window and select Brushes. Or you can hit F5. My brush menu comes up. And I'm going to select um, some interesting brushes to put in the background. Maybe we'll go with uh, some of the grunge brushes, Vector Pack. Uh, those are my favorites. So let's, let's pick something like this. Um, now, you'll notice that I'm going a little too fast. See, I, I went ahead and I selected that brush and it applied it to my object, okay? Now, in order to keep that from happening, let me back up and hit Control z In order to keep that from happening, what I need to do is create a new layer and lock the layer that I'm working on. So I'm going to go ahead, or you could click off this object, but I like using different layers. So I'm going to go ahead and lock layer 1 and create a new layer right there, layer 2. Now I can select this brush. Now I want to change the color of the brush, obviously, so uh, let's go with a red. That'll stand out nicely on here. Actually, let's uh, let's go with a, a really light color, maybe a white. Let's just, well, let's go with a dark green. I'm sorry, I'm so indecisive here. Um, let's go with that dark green. That'll look good. Uh, now, let me just go ahead and change my stroke color and get rid of my fill color so that my stroke color is the dark color. All right, then I'm going to start making marks with this brush, and you can see when I make marks with it, um, this kind of pattern happens, and it's all dependent on um, how you do your brush. And again, it, for more information on using the paintbrush tool, I would suggest you watch the video tutorial on how to use the paintbrush tool in uh, CS4. So I'm just going to make some some strokes back here, some kind of random strokes. I can change my size again of, of some of the strokes that I'm making. Um, and I can also change the opacity of some of these these marks that I'm making as well if I want. Um, kind of add some depth and some interest to things. All right, uh, just for fun, I'm going to use a couple other brushes back here. Um, and get some texture back there in the background. Uh, let's open up the ink and we'll put some splatters back there. Um, so we'll open up the ink menu. And now before I add the ink, um, well, I'll go ahead and add the ink back here. Uh, we'll, we'll start with this one. And I'm going to change my stroke color and make it a lighter color. Uh, this is almost a white. And then I'll splatter some of those ink splatters back there. Maybe make it a little bit larger so it's a little bit clearer to see. And probably bring up my opacity a little bit. Let's see how this stuff looks. There we go. Now we're now we're kind of creating uh, some interesting stuff happening here. And you know what's so great about this is almost that you don't have uh, total control over what happens. You know, you got kind of just some splatters happening. Maybe we'll maybe we'll take an, a stroke and run right across the middle of that. See how it looks, and that 
that doesn't really work. So let's uh, let's pick a different color and let's see if something like that works. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's kind of nice. Um, so I'm just kind of building up a pattern um, using different brush, using different brushes, um, and also um, with that gradient that we laid down in the background. First of all, now let's add some symbols in here um, and. Your symbols, I've already got uh, an option to connect to that, but if you don't, you can go up to Window and select Symbols. Um, the shortcut there is Shift Control F11. Um, you can click on that and this little menu comes up for Symbols. Okay, and I'm going to kind of slide this so it's easy for me to access down here at the bottom. These are the standard symbols that come up and they're, they're all fine and good and dandy, but um, for this, let's, uh, let's work with the Grom uh, actually, let's start with the dot pattern vector pack, and um, let's look at some of the things. These are all standard symbols that come with CS4. I want to show you how to edit a symbol. Um, first of all, you'll notice that when you when you create, when you uh, select this library for the symbols, it comes up in a new spot, okay? And here's the symbols that are readily available. Let's say you wanted to use this, this uh, pattern, okay? Um, you, the best thing to do is to go ahead and click and pull it over to your symbol menu, okay, just like that. Now, if we were to use this symbol without any editing, this is what it would look like. It would go on there, and in this case, it's making a big mess, okay. Um, so we want to be able to edit this symbol so it works for our image. In order to do that, we're going to double click on the symbol once it's in our symbol menu. What happens is it puts this symbol in isolation mode, okay, and it's going to allow us to edit it and make it the size that we want, make it the color that we want. So first of all, we need to select the object and select all the paths inside of that object. So I'll just bring the selection tool over and select the entire object. Now we need to pick what color we want it to, to go to, and uh, let's just pick, uh, let's pick this dark green. Um, and now you'll notice that it didn't change because that dark green change the stroke color. We need it to be the fill color. So if we reverse those, you'll see that it, that is selected. I'm not sure if the dark green's going to, how it's going to look, but we'll try. Okay. Uh, now we also want it to be resized. We want it to be smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and transform it to be kind of the size that I want it to be. And that's probably a little bit better. And I'm kind of going to want it to come out of the corner a little bit like that. Um, so I'll just resize it just like that. Now, when I'm done, um, changing it, editing the symbol the way I want it to be. I'll just double click in the background and then I'm out of isolation mode and then I'm back to where I was. But you'll notice now that symbol is in my symbol menu and it's the size I want it to be and it's the color I want it to be. So now when I pull it to my stage, it is on there and it's a little bit better looking. Uh, but before we do that, let's back up a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer for this because I want this uh, symbol to kind of look like it's behind all these brush strokes, kind of far off in the distance. So uh, in order to do that, I'll lock layer 2, I'll create a new layer, and I'll pull layer 3 behind layer 2. Now I can pull my symbol in here, and it looks like it's behind some of those other brush strokes back there. I'm also going to go ahead and bring the opacity down a little bit on that symbol. And, yeah, that looks a lot better. Now, if I de deselect, select over here, we kind of see what we've got going on. Let me lock that layer so it stops flashing. Now we've got an idea of what we've got going on here. And you can see now how you can build up really complex and interesting backgrounds using the gradient tool, using the brush tool, and using all the symbols that you have available to you and editing those symbols the way you want them to be. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com.